Hey there, Beam staff. My name is Rick, and I'm a digital fabrication specialist. And today, I'm going to be walking you through what to do when a 3D printer is not extruding. Now, there could be a few different reasons for this, and as a staff member, you should be able to diagnose and troubleshoot them. Here's a list of items that we're going to cover in order to help us troubleshoot. But before we troubleshoot, let's make sure we're familiar with the back of a 3D printer. This is the spool. This is where the filament comes out of. It is then led up into the feeder. The feeder has two little wheels that push the filament through the Bowden tube up to the print core. And this is the feeder lever. This uh, releases or tightens the filament to make sure it stays in place. Now that we're familiar with the back of a 3D printer, let's get into the first thing you should do when checking to see why a 3D printer is not extruding. And that is checking to make sure the spool is entangled. So here are just two examples of tangled spool. Uh, you might see different versions of this, but the point is the spool is not normal, and if this continues, it is going to cause problems. Now, depending on how lucky you are, you might be able to untangle this just by moving a few things around, but the recommended method is to go ahead and unload the filament and reload it. The reason for this is that tangled spool can often lead into compounding issues, one of which is called a grind out. A grind out is when the feeder motor tries to push the filament through the button tube. For some reason, it's stuck either because the spool is tangled or the extruder isn't extruding properly, and the wheels in the motor just keep trying to push the filament through, but it's not going anywhere, so it ends up chewing it up or grinding it out. Hence, grind out. Now, this is what normal filament should look like. As you can see, it's all one solid piece. It's going to be pushed through the button tubes into the print core. This is what a grind out looks like. As you can see, the filament looks like somebody took a bite out of it. Uh, this is because the wheel in the feeder compartment just kept trying to push this through the button tube, but since the filament wasn't moving, it just ended up, you know, chewing a piece out. So in order to unload from the main screen, go to Materials and Print Cores, Material 1, and then hit Unload. You're then going to hear a very pleasant sound that I'll just go ahead and let you listen to right now. Once that's done, go ahead and hit confirm, and you should be all good to go on loading the filament. And I also want to show you what this looks like from the back of the printer. Now, if you're able to unload the filament successfully, that's great. That means all you have to do is snip off the piece that's grinded out and go ahead and reload it. But oftentimes, it won't always be this easy. And in those cases, uh, we have to do a more involved process, which entails taking off the Bowden tubes and manually pulling out the filament. In order to do this process, go ahead and start from the back. Take off the ring that secures the Bowden tube. Don't lose this. It's very important. And then what you want to do is hold one side of the Bowden tube down and then pull up, and it should fairly easily just pop out. And I will show a more detailed and zoomed in version of this a little bit later. And now you want to grab your cutters and snip the filament, disconnecting the spool from the feeder. And at this point, all we have is the filament that is going to the print core. And now we want to remove the front burn tube from the 3D printer. So go ahead and remove the ring that's securing it. And don't lose this, this is very important. And don't pay attention to me accidentally dropping this into the printer. It was all planned and a part of the video, so don't worry about it. Anyways, after you've uh, given up on finding the ring from inside the printer, go ahead and take off the button tube. So hold down one side and then pull up with some pressure. Uh, it's pretty easy for now. And I'll show you a zoomed in version as promised. So here, hold down one end and pull with a little bit of force. Now thus far, everything looks pretty straightforward and easy, but you may come to find out that your mileage will vary, especially when you're on the floor troubleshooting these issues yourself. What tends to be the biggest issue is actually taking the burning tubes out because let's say that the uh, filament decides to expand inside the print core, 
Well, now taking the front button tube out isn't as easy as it seems. All this is to say, just stay persistent. It's not a big deal if it's taking you a little bit more effort than what the video showed you. Just keep at it. So at this point, we've taken out the back button tube as well as the front button tube. It should look something like this. And now we're ready for the next step of actually taking the filament out. So go ahead and press on the feeder lever and pull out the filament. And now we're ready for the last step, which is going to be actually taking the filament out of the tube. So with one hand, grip one end of the button tube, with the other, grab the filament and just pull it out. And again, this might be another one of those cases where your mileage might vary, as sometimes it's kind of hard to take the filament out of the tube, but no worries, worst case you get a good arm day. Now before we put the button tubes back into their place, I just want to mention a slight detail that most people don't know about, and that's that the button tubes are actually shaped differently on each end. So you can see the top one is actually more flat, and the bottom one's more concave. Uh, the one that's more flat actually goes inside the printer uh, in the front end, and then the one that's more concave goes inside the printer at the back end. And we just make sure we're putting these in the way they're meant to be put in. Now starting from the back, grab the button tube, slot it in, and make sure to put in the ring that you didn't lose. And we're all good to go. And now that we're done with that, let's do the front end of the printer. So grab the button tube and slot it in, and then take the ring that we so diligently kept safe and secure the button tube to the print core. And just like that, we're done. So now we can actually load the filament back in. So take your filament, make sure it looks somewhat straight just to make things easier. Put it inside the feeder, use the feeder lever, and push it inside the button tube ever so slightly. And so now let's go back to the front of the printer and from the main menu, materials and print cores, material one, and then hit load. It's gonna ask you to place the spool inside the spool holder as well as place it into the feeder. Since we already done that previously, you can just hit continue and we should be good to go. The only thing that we have to do is actually select the material as it's gonna ask you here. And then here at Beam, we use CPE. So click on that. Again, it's gonna ask you to insert to the feeder, which we already did, so hit continue. So after it's done heating up, you're actually gonna see the filament go inside the print core. And this is probably the funnest part. It looks like the filament's going on a roller coaster ride. But there's one more step we need to take care of, and I'll show you that in the next part. So the final step here is waiting for the material to load, but more importantly, the material is actually gonna be pushed through the print core, and it's gonna ask you to wait until material is being extruded out. This process is actually called purging, uh, and it's just removing any excess filament, as well as pushing through the filament that you put in. Uh, not a big deal, just wait until you actually see something, and we'll go ahead and snap right to it. And as you can see, white filament's being extruded out. Uh, since there was no other filament here before, there's only going to be white, but if you switch filaments and there's a different color, you're probably going to see some of the old uh, filament be extruded out, and you want to wait until you see just the new color you put in. And this is the last step. And just to recap, we covered the following items. So we got familiar with the 3D printer. We talked about some first steps to diagnose, as well as what grind out is. We then talked about how to fix the issue ideally, and what to do if our ideal solution didn't work, as well as how to set everything back to normal.